So here we have a number line with 0, 1 and 2 labelled. Now to get from 0 to 1, we have 10 lines, which means that each of these lines stands for 1 tenth. Below, we also have two big rectangles, and each rectangle is split into 10 pieces, so this will help us count in tenths. If we shade one of our pieces on our rectangle, we have one tenth, and as a decimal, we write one tenth as 0 0.1. So the number before the decimal point tells us how many holes we have, and we don't have any hole rectangles, but then the digit after the decimal point tells us how many tenths we have, and we have one tenth. We can also use place value counters to show tenths. So, if we count on another tenth, we now have two tenths, which is 0 0.2. Three tenths is 0 0.3, and you're probably getting the hang of this, so I'll speed the video up. Four tenths is 0 0.4. Five tenths is 0 0.5. Six tenths is 0 0.6. Seven tenths is 0 0.7. 8 tenths is 0 0.8, 9 tenths is 0 0.9, and if we count on another tenth, we have 10 tenths, but that's the same as having one hole. So, we have 1 or 1 1.0. Remember, the number before the decimal point tells us how many holes we have, and we now have one whole rectangle, and the digit after the decimal point tells us how many tenths we have and we don't have any extra tenths. We can also show, using place value counters, that if we have 10 tenths, we can exchange those 10 tenths for one whole. Now, if we carry on counting, we have 11 tenths, which is the same as one whole rectangle and one tenth of another one, so that's 1.1. .1. Now, we have 1.2, 1.3 means we have one hole and three tenths, and you're probably getting the idea again, so I'll speed this up. 1.4 is one and four tenths. 1.5 is one and five tenths. 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. And now we have 1.9, because we have one whole rectangle coloured in, and we have nine tenths of another one. So, one whole and nine tenths is represented in decimal form as 1.9. If we count on another tenth, we now have 20 tenths coloured in altogether. We have two whole rectangles coloured in, so that's 2.0, because remember, the digit before the decimal point tells us how many holes you have, and the digit after the decimal point tells us how many extra tenths you have. And here, these 10 tenths, again, can be exchanged for one more hole. So, 1.1 is equal to how many tenths? Well, 1.1 means we have one hole, and the one after the decimal point tells us that we have one tenth. Remember, one hole is the same as 10 tenths, so if we have 10 tenths and then an extra one tenth, we have 11 tenths altogether. 1.4 means we have one hole and four tenths. One hole is the same as 10 tenths, so 10 tenths plus the four tenths means that 1.4 is equal to 14 tenths. 2.7 means we have two holes and seven tenths, so altogether that's 27 tenths, because remember, each hole can be exchanged for 10 tenths, and if we have two holes, that makes 20 tenths. Then, if we have another 7, that's 27 tenths altogether. So, to show what we have, if we have 1.1, we have one hole and one tenth, but we can split our hole into 10 tenths, which means we have 11 tenths altogether. 1.4 means we have one hole and four tenths, but if we split our hole into tenths as well, we have a total of 14 tenths. 
and 2.7 means we have two wholes and seven tenths, but if we split each of our wholes into tenths, we have 27 tenths altogether, because each of our wholes can be split into 10 tenths. Now, 13 tenths is what as a decimal? That's 1.3, because remember, 10 of these tenths can make one whole, and then we'll have 3 tenths left over. 29 tenths is what as a decimal? That's 2.9, because if we have 20 tenths, we can exchange for two wholes, and then we have 9 tenths left over. And here we can see 13 tenths, because each fraction bar is split into tenths, so each piece is one tenth and we have 13 of them, but we can exchange 10 tenths for one whole. And if we have 29 tenths, we can exchange 20 of these tenths for two wholes and then we have 9 tenths left over. We can also show what we've done using place value counters. So 1.1 means we have one whole and one tenth, so we can have one whole place value counter and one tenth place value counter. But the question asked us to write that as a fraction over 10. So we exchange one whole for 10 extra tenths, meaning that we have 11 tenths altogether. 1.4 is 1 and 4 tenths, so that's 1 whole and then 4 tenths as our place value counters, but again the 1 whole can be exchanged for 10 more tenths, giving us 14 tenths altogether. 2.7 is 2 wholes and 7 tenths, so we can show 2 whole place value counters and 7 tenths, but each of our 2 wholes can be exchanged for 10 more tenths, giving us 27 tenths altogether. Then we had 13 tenths and needed to write that as a decimal. So if we show 13 tenths, we can exchange 10 of our tenths for one whole. That gives us 1 and 3 tenths, which we write as 1.3. And if we've got 29 tenths, we can swap 10 tenths for one whole, and then we can swap another 10 tenths for another whole. That means that we have 2 altogether and 9 tenths, so that's 2.9. Finally, let's work out the values of A, B and C on this number line. We have 0, 1 and 2 labelled, and to get from 0 to 1, we have 10 little lines, so each of these lines represents 1 tenth. A is on our fourth line, so that's 4 tenths or 0 0.4. Now for B, we have to be careful. This comes after 1, and remember, each line is 1 tenth, so this value here is 1 and 1 tenth, which we write as 1.1. 1 .1. And C is 8 lines after 1. Remember, each of these lines was 1 tenth, so C represents 